السلام عليكم how to insert every craniospinal screw this is axis or c2 and this is atlas or c1 and this is occipital bone and foramen magnum for occipital instrumentation usually a midline keel plate is used and the plate is usually placed 5 to 10 millimeters above the foramen magnum and screws are usually inserted below the external occipital protuberance and superior neocal lines. Screws inserted in the midline usually have a length of 10 to 12 millimeters and screws inserted off the midline usually have a length of 6 to 8 millimeters and all of these measures can be confirmed on preoperative CT. Screws usually have a diameter of 1 to 2 millimeters. For insertion of occipital condyle screws, Atlanto occipital joint should be identified and the screw entry point is 1 to 2 millimeters cranial to the Atlanto occipital joint and 5 millimeters lateral to the form magnum. The screw is directed 5 degrees cranially and 15 degrees medially. The tip of the screw should not be more anterior than the tip of the dense. The screw is usually 3.5 by 32 to 34 millimeters with 22 millimeters in bone and 10 to 12 millimeters smooth shaft outside to line up with C1 lateral mass screws. The mean width and the length of the occipital condyle is usually 11 millimeters and 25 millimeters respectively. For C12 transarticular screws, posterior and anterior approaches can be used. For the posterior approach, the entry point is 1 to 2 millimeters cranial to C23 joint and through the midline axis of the bars. So this is the inferior articular process of C2 and this is the superior articular process of C2 and this is the bars. The screw trajectory can be determined fluoroscopically aiming through C2 inferior articular process, C2 bars and superior articular process and then through C12 joint and into the lateral mass of C1. For the anterior approach, the entry point is determined according to the C12 joint. The entry point is 7 to 8 millimeters caudal to C12 joint and 3 to 5 millimeters lateral to its medial border. The screw is directed 30 degrees laterally and 30 degrees posteriorly. These are C1 and the C2 or Atlas and the Axis and the C1 screws are lateral mass screws and the multiple approaches have been described including direct C1 lateral mass screws and the posterior arch lateral mass screws. But a very simple entry to recognize is to go directly through the midpoint of C1 lateral mass at the junction of the posterior arch of C1 and the lateral mass itself. So this is a very good entry point to start with. The screw will be directed 10 to 15 degrees medially and about 20 degrees cranially. The screw should be parallel to the posterior arch of C1 and aiming towards the inferior half of C1 anterior tubercle. This is anterior tubercle of C1 and the screw should be going like this in lateral fluoroscopic view. The screw should be 3.5 by 30 millimeters with 20 millimeters in bone and 10 millimeters smooth shaft outside. For C2 screws, I am going to describe C2 bars screws, C2 pedicle screws, and the anterior odontoid screw. For C2, Bars screw, the entry point is 3 to 4 millimeters cranial 
to C to 3 joint and along the midline axis of the bars. There is no medial or lateral inclination and the craniocaudal angle can be determined fluoroscopically. The screw is usually 3.5 by more than 16 millimeters. For C2 pedicle screws, the entry point is more cranial than C2 parse screws and the screw is directed 30 to 45 degrees medially and 30 to 45 degrees cranially and again this can be checked fluoroscopically and the screw is usually 3.5 by 15 to 30 millimeters. For anterior odontoid screw, the entry point is the anterior and the inferior end blade of C2 exactly at the center of C2 body and the screw is directed towards the apex of the odontoid fracture or towards the posterior half of the odontoid tip. Again, this can be checked in the AP and the lateral fluoroscopic views. The screw is usually 4 by 40 to 50 millimeters and the two screws can be used and at that time the screws will be directed medially. C3 to 7 or subaxial screws are either lateral mass or pedicle screws. For cervical lateral mass screws, several techniques have been described including Roy Camel, Magrel and the N techniques. But a simple way to describe lateral mass screws is to start in the midpoint of the lateral mass. So this is a superior articular process and this is the inferior articular process of the cervical vertebra and this is the lateral mass between both structures. Start in the midpoint of the lateral mass and the screw is directed 20 to 30 degrees laterally to avoid the vertebral artery in the forum transversorium and is directed 20 to 30 degrees cranially to avoid the nerve root. You can put a probe in the facet joint itself to know the craniocaudal direction and this can also be checked in lateral fluoroscopic view. The screw is usually 3.5 by 14 millimeters. For pedicle screws, the entry point is just caudal to the facet joint, maybe 3 to 4 millimeters, and in the midpoint of the lateral mass. The screw is directed 40 to 50 degrees medially, and this angle is reduced from cranial to caudal. And in lateral view, the screw should be parallel to the upper end blade of the vertebral body. The screws are usually 3.5 to 4 millimeters by 20 to 30 millimeters. The entry point for thoracic pedicle screws is to start 3 millimeters inferior to the junction between the lateral edge of the superior articular process and the transverse process. And this entry point is usually 3 millimeters lateral to the midpoint of the superior articular process. So 3 millimeters inferior to the junction and 3 millimeters laterally. The screw is usually directed perpendicular to superior articular process and it's usually going 0 to 15 degrees medially and this angle is reduced from cranial to caudal and 0 to 20 degrees caudally. Screws are usually 4 to 5.5 millimeters by 20 to 40 millimeters. L1 to S1 screws or lumbosacral screws are either pedicle screws or cortical bone trajectory screws. The entry point for pedicle screws is the intersection between the center of the transverse process and the lateral aspect of the superior articular process. Screws are directed from 5 to 30 degrees medially and this angle is increased from cranial to caudal with 5 degrees for each level from L1 to S1. For S1 screw, aim for sacral promontory. And the craniocaudal trajectory can be determined by fluoroscopy in lateral view. Screws are usually 6 to 7.5 millimeters and 40 to 55 millimeters and the tip 
should be two thirds the way across the vertebral body. The entry point for cortical bone trajectory screws is three millimeters medial to the corner between the bars and the inferior transverse process. For S1 cortical bone trajectory screw, the entry is midway between the L5 S1 facet and the first dorsal foramina. Screws are directed 20 degrees laterally and 30 to 45 degrees cranially. S2 screws are either pedicular or alar and their entry point is between S1 and S2 dorsal foramina just medial to the lateral dorsal crest. Bedicular screws are directed 20 to 30 degrees medially and are usually 25 to 35 millimeters and alar screws are directed 30 to 40 degrees laterally and 20 to 30 degrees cranially and are usually 30 to 40 millimeters.